I'm recording this on my new uh, MacBook, and I, I have no idea why the quality is so bad on this computer, so my apologies. But uh, I'm going to talk about my first year as a wildland firefighter experience pretty much here. And there was lots of highs, lots of lows. It was uh, an interesting time. Uh, in 60 days of work, I made around $10,000 just as like a idea of people understanding if they want to do this or not. And then I'm just going to get more into specific events and feelings and all that shit because this job was just, it, it was, uh, it was a monster to put it lightly. Um, so I worked specifically for a company named Dustbusters out of Oregon it was a good time. They try to be more professional, so like no cursing, um, just not being a fucking kid, I guess. Because that's how they get more uh, more money out there, is being professional, and then overhead sees that, and they're like, hey, we want these guys to stay and work at this fire longer because of the hard work they put in, the professionalism, professionalism they have, and they're just like total attitude, which is good. So, uh, I went to five fires, I believe. Uh, yes, I went to five fires in my 60 days that I had for this company. Uh, the first one was Grandview. It was based at a sister's organ. That was pretty boring, but it was a good introduction to, like, kind of what the job was going to be like and, like, different things we would do. And it wasn't always going to be, like, you're in the thick of a fire, like, doing stuff. So, we did a lot of gritting. Gritting is basically when... Uh, get in a line with a certain amount of spacing in between you and then you walk a specific area to look for spot fires for whatever it may be so uh, we did a lot of gritting we did a lot of mop up which was just cleaning up burned areas pretty much post like massive flames just like little spot fires and little whatever so that was uh that was a good introduction grandview was nice that was two week run uh, every run, but my last run, I got a full two weeks. So, so that was really exciting because that's rare, especially for a first year like myself. Then I went to uh, Cottonwood uh, Canyon, Coal Canyon, and Black Butte. That run, full 14 days, two weeks, that was the best run I had. It like We were always on the move. We went to three fires on one run, which is pretty rare already. And we were basically an IA crew, which is initial attack. Or initial action, I can't remember which is. It's either attack or action, but same same gist. You're you're basically the first to like go mess with things, so that was always fun. Those three fires, I had an absolute blast on. I was just busting my ass, pouring sweat every day. Every day I came back covered in just dirt and just gunk and ash, and I never felt so good about myself. And when I came home, I was so physically fit. I was like, this is finally what I wanted from firefighting. Like I looked so good. That was probably like my peak physical condition. So that was like three months ago, two months ago, something like that now. So yeah, that was phenomenal. That was a great time. And then went to the Smith Fire based out of Tiller, Oregon. And uh, that was not a good time at all. I spent, I think, 32 days on that fire because we got rolled over once and then we got rolled over again. Uh the first two runs, both 14 days, and then the final run was four days, I believe. And then we got demobilized because there wasn't much to do. So, on this uh, fire, which it, luckily it was a good camp. We got showers, had showers the entire time. So, uh, I know multiple people that showered literally every night that we were out there because it's like, what else do we have to do? We're getting back early. Might as well go get clean every day and act like you're home. So, we did a lot of staging which is just sitting there hanging out in the trucks. Or uh, for a while, we just hung out at a campsite because that's what Overhead told us to do. Just go hang out at this campsite and just be ready for anything. It's like, okay. And then uh, we held line a bunch. So you just literally stand there and you face forward and you just watch stuff. And you just watch for fire. So we did that. We did a lot of brushing, which was the saw team would go in, start chopping the limbs, and then the... Uh, Sawyer team, that, no, wait, yeah, no, I'm getting confused, it's too early in the morning right now, but, uh, 
<laughs> then the anyone that didn't have their saw certification would come in and grab the branches, throw it to the other side of the road or whatever. And then, uh, so that's brushing. Then we did hose lay, just laying hose down a mountain. That was pretty much the main one. That was fun. We did a lot of good hikes on the Smith fire, luckily. And uh, chipping, chipping, lots of chipping. Chipping is not fun because usually you get a crap ton of breaks and it's fucking boring. <laughs> and, <coughs> excuse me, you just stand there and you grab the branches that you did from brushing that the saw team cut, bring them up to the chipper, and you just place them in the chipper, and that's it. That's all you do. And then it's like usually, since we had a 20-man crew, we did 10 on, 10 off. So it would be like 30 minutes to an hour. Oop, shut up, phone. So we do like an hour of work, hour off, hour of work, hour off with the other 10-man crew. And it was just like, God, the days just drug on sometimes. And luckily, sometimes it also like went by amazingly quick because you go do an hour of work then you come back and you take an hour nap <laughs> and that was pretty nice so uh yeah that was good and then uh yeah that was basically the gist of my fire run did a little bit of everything throughout the entire uh 60 days or so so that was exciting especially for a first year you don't, usually don't get to do everything and i pretty much did do everything uh we did hotline, which was digging around a fire multiple times. That was fun. That was probably my one of the hardest things to do, and also one of the most fun. Um, looking back, it was it was just like your face covered in smoke, can't see anything, can't breathe because you're just inhaling smoke, and you have to dig around this freaking fire, stop it from spreading, and it's it's hard. It's hard work, and you're just drenched in sweat afterwards. Your face is coated in dirt, but like at the end of the day you look back on that and you go dude i did that i'm so proud of myself and that was probably one of the best things about fires like um looking back even on the absolutely hard days you could uh at the end of it when you're laying in your tent just go you know what? i did that that's that's awesome like i'm so proud of myself type of deal and then uh my favorite thing about fire specifically was just the bonds you make with everybody i worked with two separate crews in my 60 days i started a uh, with my initial crew that I loved them to death, like the funniest group of individuals that I've ever met in my life. Like absolutely hilarious. We, we had so much fun. We were like, a, just like, well, this is like, regardless for any crew, pretty much, you're going to be like a family. And that's the best part. And like, I bonded with so many people and like from all over the country, like people from Florida, New York, like even as close as Washington or Nevada or anything like that. They were from all over the United States and it was so nice to see all these people from different walks of life come together and just build this, build this family bond just so quickly. Like within days, you're just like, that's my brother. Oh, that's my sister. Like they're family. They're awesome. I love them to death. I'd do anything for them. And that happens so quickly, and it's it's amazing. I that's that was my favorite part of fire, building these bonds and making friends. And now I have friends like up in uh, hour away from me, three hours away from me, uh, just still in Oregon that I can go see and hang out with any time. And because I love them to death, and they love me, and it's just like that's my brother over there. Like I don't know, it was a great time, and I have so many funny memories and videos and pictures and. Just, it, it was great. It was great. Like, meeting the people out there that you meet is phenomenal. Like, there's always going to be annoying, stupid people. <laughs> You're never going to get along with everybody. But for the most part, like, I got along with pretty much everybody. There's always a couple bad apples. But, God, like, the majority of the people out there, like, absolute phenomenal people. And that was, that was the best, making those bonds out there with these uh, individuals. So... But uh, back to like the work, like some days it will be absolutely hard work. Like when you're doing hotline or they're like, hey, hike up this hill for two miles with like the 45 pounds that you have on your back. Like it, when you're in pain, you might slip and fall, you might get hurt. Things like that can happen and it will sometimes push you to your limits. Like I got pushed to my limits and I was so happy that I did because that's what I wanted in this job. I wanted hard work. I wanted to be pushed there. I want to see what I was capable of. But then on the other hand, like you can experience absolutely nothing. Like there was a point where for like three days we did nothing but stage and we did no work. And that was boring. But that's what our boss wanted us to do because we were just waiting for something to happen. It's like some days it was uh, pouring rain. Some days it was sprinkling. It's just like there's 
really nothing we can really do here, but you're going to get paid. You're going to sit, you're going to hang out. And, uh, sometimes you'll, you'll have that one end of the spectrum where you're just doing so much hard work that it's overwhelming. And then other days where you're just like mentally drained because there's nothing to do. So it, it, firefighting is a really weird job, but yeah. So it was a fun, a lot of time, but I've never been so miserable in my life because like I struggle with like depression a lot and like being away from home, not seeing friends or family. Sometimes you won't have service. Sometimes you cannot get a shower like, and after a hard day's work, like you go home to your tent and that's all you got. Like you, you get your dinner, which is always free, which is nice. No expenses out in fire, which is phenomenal. You get your dinner, you eat it. Maybe you hang out with some people and then you go to your tent and that's your day. Like you work, eat and sleep. That that's your entire life out there. And sometimes you don't get these like little pleasures in life. Like you, you might have not no service. You can't get on Facebook. You can't call your mom. You can't text your girlfriend. You can't do any of that stuff. And it's miserable. And that took such a hard toll on me, especially with what I deal with normally, like, uh, my depression. Oh man, it was rough out there. A lot of nights, like what I would have to do is just sit there and listen to music and just try to relax myself with the podcast. I'm going to sleep and just like a lot of times I would cry because I'd get so sad. It's like, I don't want to be away from home anymore. Like, I want to go home. I'm so sick of this crap. I can't do it. Like, the money's great, but good Lord, like, I was I was so sad out there sometimes. And, like, uh, I don't think everyone expects firefighting to be both a physically demanding job and a mentally demanding job because there will be times when you're going to get sad out there. And there's not really you can do not not anything you can really do about it unfortunately you just kind of have to stick through it and that's the crappy part especially when you come home for two days because like uh, most of my runs i just went home for two days and then i was back out for another two weeks so i'd come home see my friends and family be so ecstatic about it and then they'd be like all right hey show back up to the compound at this time and be like here we go again and it would make me really sad but that's kind of how uh, firefighting works so uh, sleeping in your tent every night isn't that bad. I don't think so. I thought it was fine. I had no issue. Even on nights where it's pouring down rain, my tent never got flooded. Sleeping bag never really got wet. Um, yeah, it was pretty much a good time. I, I didn't have no issue. I had a, a little, like, mat, probably like half an inch thick, and then my sleeping bag, which was pretty decent sleeping bag, and then that was it. And that was how my tent was set up. And I had no issues sleeping in there every night, feeling good. Oh, and like, let me talk about, I'm just talking about like random things now, like porta potties. They clean them pretty well, considering like the camp is like mostly men and how men are just disgusting and will piss and shit everywhere. Like, let's just be honest. They, men are just absolute trash at just trying to be clean. So, shout out to whoever was keeping those porta potties out there nice because I never walked into a porta potty that was just absolutely disgusting. Like the, the type where you open up the door, you look, and you're like, can't do that. I never had that issue, and that's what I was afraid of going out there because you have seen some horrible porta potties, I'm sure, in your lifetime at like the fairgrounds or just anywhere. So uh, I was thoroughly impressed <laughs> that I didn't have any of those issues. And then uh, showers are pretty common for bigger fires, but they're hard to get to if you just had a long day and you get back late, and then because they usually close at like 10. So. Like, if you get back at, like, 9.30, then you have to, like, eat real quick and then just sprint as fast as you can over there to get a shower. So, uh, that's if you want one. I personally went, like, on my second 14-day run, I think I went eight days without a shower. Uh, I think I took a shower on day four. And then I took one on 14 which was my last day. So the night before I went home, I was like, I'll, I'll have to go take a shower. I'll risk uh, my personal time with myself and like risk some sleep because we're going home the next day. So yeah, whatever the distance on that was. So I went many days without a shower on that run. Uh, luckily, the other runs after that were pretty common to get showers for me, like every three days, every four days, which is pretty normal. But like what you do if, if you can't get go get a shower, you just go to your tent with it. Every, bring baby wipes, by the way. Bring baby wipes. So what you would want to do if you can't get a shower, go to your tent, wipe yourself down with baby wipes. Or if they have sinks available, go to the sinks, wipe your face, get a paper towel, kind of just like wipe 
what you can often go to your tent and then finish it up, whatever else. But baby wipes, very important for the porta potties and for uh, baby wipe baths, whore baths, as I call them. So, yeah, uh, always bring baby wipes. And uh, lots of driving to and from the fire. So, luckily, I didn't have too much of an issue. I slept in a truck a lot of the time. I was always middle seat every, all the 60 days but one, I was in the middle back seat, the back middle seat of this truck. Uh, I think the the one that I was in most of the time was a, I think it was a Dodge. I think it was a Dodge Ram. So I was usually cramped, but that was fine. I was like, whatever, I'll just do it. Because if you're in the other two seats, you have to either worry about putting the chocks down on the truck or um, doing like backing, because we had to back people up. Even though we had a backup camera on the truck and everything, they wanted someone specifically out there backing up the truck just in case of like danger or like error or anything so so yeah uh lots of driving to and from the fire but luckily you're getting paid for it so it doesn't really matter and yeah like i said this job is more of a mental game than a physical game in my opinion i'm pretty physically fit i didn't have too much of an issue out there it was just uh the mental game was really tough being away from friends and family not having service because at the smith fire that i was at for 30 something days um I didn't have service. So what I had to do was bum off someone's hot spot like 90% of the time. And even then it was spotty. So luckily I did get that though from multiple people, multiple people, uh, multiple people did have hot spots. So that was lucky for me. They had service, just whatever reason, like cricket did not work out there, unfortunately. And like, but sometimes they will have cell towers out there. Just like, if you don't have that specific carrier that the cell tower is for, then you're screwed. But yeah, uh, firefighting was an interesting thing as a first year. Uh, it, it was good. <clears throat> Had its bad moments, but the money is very much worth it. Like I said, in 60 days, I made about $10,000. It was about fifteen dollars before taxes and everything. So I'm excited to see how my tax refund looks at the end of the year. If I'm going to get a lot of money back or however that's going to work. But you do make a lot of money. You're just going to have to sacrifice your summer which is very unfortunate, like uh, bonds that you have at home with family or friends, you're not going to see them for months or for God, who knows long, how, who knows how long, but like when you come home for that 48 hours, if you just only have those two days off, it's hard to like use one of those days to just reset your pack for everything that you need. Cause you have to do all your laundry. You have to air out your tent. You have to Go resupply, buy more wipes, buy more band-aids, more leg wraps, whatever you need for blisters or anything out there. Or go get new socks and shirts because your other ones got messed up. So uh, usually you only get like one day to go hang out with people and that's unfortunate. Luckily I was just like, hey, everybody come with me and we'll go run these errands. And then we'll, I got to go run these errands, just come with me and hang out. And most people did. So that was lucky for me. Good friends right there. But yeah, uh, firefighting. It's a good time, but it's it's just very difficult. Like I, I'm gonna do it again next year, cause the fun did probably outweigh the negative. Even though I did have a lot of negative days, I'm just like when I look back on it, I remember those crazy events that would happen, like trees torching in front of us, or like just crazy stuff, like. I don't know. I had some crazy fun stories and videos and pictures and just like stuff you like you wouldn't believe it unless you were there almost. So yeah, that was my firefighting review slash recap of my experience here. And if you're thinking about it, look into it. Like I have a video of just like uh, cool wildland firefighting clips. Like go watch that. See what it's like from like a camera's perspective. It's like someone's like first person view. Like you get to see some cool things might get an idea for what some of the work is like with the tools and all that stuff. So yeah, great time, very hard, but um, obviously the money is what matters here and that's probably why you're even considering firefighting. So yeah, if we do wildland firefighting, if you'd like money and you like being miserable and you like hard work. So yeah, that's all I really got to say, but hope you enjoyed this little uh, uh, video here and I'm sorry about the low quality, my bad. I don't know what's going on with the computer, but Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.